So it appears that we have a retail box inside of the card box. And that's what the retail box looks like and it's very nice. So we can see here the picture of what the printer looks like. Turn your desktop into a workshop, 3D printing, laser engraving, and CNC carving. Very premium box. So in the back here we can see a lot more information. So it does say easy assembly, that's a plus, and supported software for this machine. So there's a couple seals here on the top. We got a cut, then we got a tab, and it should just open up. And so right on the top, this is what we see. So we got a pretty large, I guess, manual is what this is. And it says, welcome to the Snapmaker family. Very interesting. We'll open this up and take a closer look in a second. And so it looks like we have the black soft foam and there's a thin layer on top. And here we can see our machine parts. So we got the three different heads. Looks like our frame pieces. Here we have a box that says accessories and tools. Looks like the brains of some sort over here and what appears to be a spool holder. Very interesting. Everything is very high quality. Feels really industrial. All right, so let's check out what this thing is. So this looks like the brains of the snap maker. So we have all our ports here, one through six, and this is where everything plugs in from the printer. And then on the other side, we have our functions, which is on and off button. Looks like screen connection and a USB port for reading files. And this one's for connecting to the computer. And there appears to be a little fan behind here. Quite a unique design so here we have a box that says accessories and tools and we'll check out what's in here a little bit later in the video so here we have the frame pieces and it is aluminum extrusions stepper motors inside and the lead screw you can probably see it and so the way the axes each travel is they have four rollers you can maybe see them a little white rollers in there and there's four of them and they're just pressing against outward to these channels here and that's how it rides on its track so there's no belt or anything. Everything is on a lead screws looks like. So very precise and linear here. And just an excellent build quality. So there are three of these and they appear to be all the same, I think. So yeah, they do look similar. And they all have this little wire that runs to the control board. And right over here, we have the three function tools. So the first one here being our 3D printer head. You can see it says 3D printing on here. And there is a large button. And that looks like to release the extruder arm where our filament will feed on the top here. It is a direct drive and everything is inside of here. We can see kind of the stepper motor through those grills. Here we have a cooling fan on the bottom. Not sure exactly what this is for parts cooling, I think, because we do have another fan on the other side and that's probably for the heat break. And we do have a 0.4 nozzle and you guys can see where we will plug in to connect to the main board. Very nice, very impressive. So here we have the laser engraver tool and does tell us to wear our safety glasses and we can see the laser under here. I don't know if you guys can see but it does say 200 milliwatt output and we also get a cooling fan to cool it off. And for the last tool we have the CNC carving and what this has is a pretty large motor that spins the shaft where we're going to put our tool in and that's how we're going to do the carving. And on the back here this is where they connect to the axes. So under the laser engraver, there was a little warning card that tells you how lasers are dangerous and to take proper precautions when using it. All right, and so that's our first layer. And so far, it's very impressive. Now, as we go deeper, we can see we have quite a few more things and it's all labeled and packaged so nicely. So let's start on this side with the filament. So we do get a whole roll of filament. It's got this nice little cover on it which is Snapmaker branded PLA in this white color, and it is half a kilogram. I like the clear spool. Over here we have a box that says safety glasses, and this is going to be two pairs of glasses, which these green ones are for the laser. So when you're using the laser, you definitely want to wear this because lasers can be dangerous for your eyes. So don't disregard wearing these glasses. And then we have just normal clear safety glasses for the CNC part of it. So here we have the power adapter. Definitely love how they packed everything. It feels very special, I guess. So we have a 24 volt, five amp power supply. So here's something interesting. Okay, so this is a USB drive and this nice chrome finish. Very cool. So here we have the build plate for the 3D printer and you guys can see the size of it. It's not very large. And by the way, this bed looks like it is heated. So underneath the bed was another build platform and this looks like it's for the CNC part and also maybe the laser plate. So it's a whole extra plate with also another extra build sticker just in case you need one. And I'm still fascinated at how nice and high quality all these parts are. 
All right, so we got a few more things left. Here we have a box that says cables, and we'll open that once we start assembling. So here we have a little bracket that looks like is some kind of holder. It has magnets in it, and I'm guessing it's maybe for this screen here. So it does have a detachable screen that looks really nice, and it's also made out of metal. So I'm thinking that maybe this bracket Okay, yeah, so that's what happens. So the bracket accommodates the screen like this. So the great thing about this is you can just pick this up, you know, push what you got to push, and then put it back in. All right, so it looks like almost everything except for one more piece down here. And this looks like the main base of the printer, and it's a really nice, chunky piece of, I guess, aluminum is what this is. Feels really good, though. And it's also got this really nice gray finish. All right, so that's everything for the box. So let's go ahead and put it away. And I do have to say, guys, this is probably the best experience I've had unboxing a 3D printer as far as the way everything is presented and packaged. All right, so we got all of our parts laid out. Let's go ahead and open up this Welcome to the Snapmaker family. So right off the bat, we get a little calibration card is what it looks like. I think this is to set the tolerances between the nozzle and tools. We also get four stickers. So the welcome card and how to contact them. So here we have the quick start guide and they open like a calendar from up to down. So it looks like quite a lot of good information and it's all written in a few languages all at once. And so here we have step one of the assembly process and there's a total of 10 steps. Very nice manual. So we also get a guide for laser engraving and this is really nice because I don't have too much experience with the stuff. So these are really nice little guides here that kind of show you and explain of how to do everything correctly. And we also get one for the CNC carving. Very cool. So before we start the assembly process, let's go ahead and look at what's in these two boxes. So this one says cables. And it's quite impressive how everything is packed. It's all individually baggied. So these look like interconnectors. And then we have the USB cable that connects from the printer to the computer. So this one has our accessories and tools. Some bolts, more smaller bolts. Looks like knobs. Like an extra heat block with the nozzle. Some tools in here. Spatula, some Allen wrenches, and some tweezers. Looks like a screwdriver set, some rubber feet, more bolts, some kind of metal brackets. Here looks like we get a couple carving bits for the CNC and what appears to be a Velcro strap. So let's open up our manual here to step one. And step one is going to be attaching our feet to the main base, four rubber feet and four M410 bolts. So here we have the plate and looking at it, we can see some arrows here. But at this step, what's more important is that we see that there's all these holes that are wallowed out. So this is going to be actually our bottom. So let's grab the rubber feet. And these are really nice quality to have a metal insert. And we're going to put one on each corner. And so we're also going to need four M4 by 10 bolts, and I think these are it. Now, they're not labeled, but the manual does have a one-to-one -one ratio picture, so you can compare it to this and scale it. So yeah, we're just going to take the little bolt, go through the hole of the foot, and then there's threads on each corner that the bolt will start through. But we are going to need some Allen wrenches, and there are a couple included, pretty nice quality ones. Here's what our spatula looks like and some tweezers. Interestingly enough, these are too small for these bolts. So there's actually another tool that's actually really nice. And this is like a dedicated screwdriver. And we have a little insert here that has Phillips on one side and a hex on the other. Since we need that side, we're gonna put the Phillips in and then we're just gonna tighten it down. And now we have a dedicated little screwdriver. I'm gonna start the foot. And you wanna tighten this until it, you know, starts to have some resistance and then that should be good enough. You definitely don't wanna over tighten this. So yeah, same thing for the other three corners. All right, and so that's our first step. So we got the platform built. So step two is attaching the heated bed to one of the linear modules. And we're gonna need the four bolts that look like that. So this is what the bolts look like. Our heated bed. And we can see the mounting points underneath. Very nicely constructed. So we're gonna lay that upside down. And then we're gonna grab any of the three linear motors here. So it doesn't really matter which one. And with the plug going towards the plug where the bed is, basically this way, we're just gonna line up the outer holes on the bed. And that's where these individual knobs will go into. So yeah, you can see here the wire, the bed plug, then each bolt on each corner. And these just need to be hand tightened. And the reason they are like this is because when you want to do the CNC, you can pull these out real quick and change the platform to use the other tools. All right, so our bed is connected to this Y axis is what this is going to be now. 
So for step three, we're just gonna connect what we just built to the base. Now again, take note that there are arrows and this time they're pointing this way and our plugs are pointing away from them the other way. So if we flip it around, we can see, so that means that our plugs will go that way. But we do need to flip this around, so we'll just lay it down on the bed and lay this on top. And we'll look here on the bed. These are the four holes where the bolts will hold them together. So, and it is evenly spaced between each other. So we're gonna grab four more of this same bolts we used for the feet and run them down. So we're gonna tighten these up really good. And this is what we have so far. So before I continue anymore, I did make a mistake. I just realized that. So these are four by 10 and the bolt that we used just now were the four by eights. And the bag with a bunch of little bolts are the four by eights. And there's another bag with the four by tens that were supposed to go into the feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and change all these out and we'll go to the next step. So for step four, we're gonna be installing the Z axis module and that's gonna go to the side here. So let's grab one of the two that are left. And if we look at the wire here, that's gonna go to the front this way. And these four bolts will line up with the threads underneath, so just like that. So we're gonna need to tip this over while holding it all together. So we're gonna go ahead and snug these up really good. And this is what we have so far. So for step five, we're gonna be installing the screen holder, which is this guy here. And we're gonna be using the same bolt that we've been using, the four eights. And that's gonna go right here up front, just like that. So again, our bolts will go from the bottom and then into the holder. All right, and that's what that looks like. And I guess we can go ahead and put our screen on here. Very nice. So far, the building process is very straightforward and quite simple. So here we have step six, which is going to be installing our X axis. And that's literally gonna go right here, something like this, but the best way to look at it is from the back. And that's what the manual shows. So your wire is gonna go to the front on this side and we're mounting it on not the last hole, but this one here on this plate. Again, we're using the same N48 bolts. So hopefully you guys can see this is the way it goes, but I'm gonna give you guys a little better look here in a second. Oh, I just realized I put it in the wrong hole already. So it goes on the inside and one on the bottom. And on this side, it actually goes on the outside hole, not the inside like the other side. Go ahead and snug these up. And this is what it looks like. So you guys can see these are on the inside and our cable is to the front towards the display. And on the other side, it's just going to go on the outside and there's no other way to put it, so it'll make sense. All right, so we're getting really close to having a built machine. So for the next part, which is step seven, we're going to be installing the printing module. So there's the 3D printing, this one here, and it simply just goes over the bracket and we're using the same little bolts. And so these threads here will line up with this bracket. And so the top two bolts will go through the lower on the outside and the bottom two also on each side there. So. so yeah, so far this is really a pretty intuitive build and I feel like pretty much anybody can do this. So we're really starting to look like a 3D printer now. So for step eight, we're gonna be installing the control board and that's gonna require the four M428 bolts and there's a bag of those. So looking at the back of the machine, the fan part is gonna go down like this and we're gonna mount it to the second thread down from the top. So just like that. So we're gonna have two bolts here and then two bolts on the bottom. All right, so this printer is starting to really look interesting. So step nine is installing the spool holder which goes right above the control module. So we're gonna need two M428 bolts. And if we look at the spool holder, there's like a little cutout here that actually goes to the top like this. So just like that. And that looks good right there. Well guys, that was pretty much our last step. The rest of it is plugging everything in. And they do have like a little diagram here that shows you where everything goes. So there's two different plugs. There's a RJ45 and a RJ25. Let's go ahead and open them up. And so you can see they're actually different. You're not gonna mix them up. So what's interesting is they decided to label all these from port one to port six. I think I would have preferred if they would have labeled what each port was like X axes, Y axes, print head, whatever. I guess that's okay. The only reason I'm saying that is because if you didn't have the manual or you had the printer somewhere else and you, you know, disassembled it or whatnot else and had to assemble it again, you wouldn't really know what goes where unless you had this diagram because this diagram here shows us that port one goes to the hot end looks like and that's going to be the bigger plug, RJ45. So we're gonna click that into port one and then the other end will click into the hot end. So now we go to port two and that is the X axis. So our X axis is this motor here and we can see the wire coming from it. And so we're gonna grab it and plug it into port number two. So for port three, we have the Y axis, which is down here. So that should simply just plug in right here. 
Port four appears to be empty. So port five is the Z axis, which is this motor here, and the wire comes out on the front of it here. So that is port five. And so our RJ25 wire is actually for the heated bed, which is over here, and we're gonna plug one end to it, and the other end to number six, or port six, I should say. All right, so that should be good right there. So we got all of our ports in except for the four, which nothing plugs into there. Now we do still have the other side. So here we can see our power port and also our screen port, which is right here. And on here, it actually shows you a picture of what everything is, even though it still doesn't line up. So in any case, it's pretty self-explanatory of what these ports look like and what they do. And just like that, guys, our printer is built. So as you can see, that was not very hard and actually quite simple and enjoyable process.